So Aspen and I are going to investigate fingerprints. Did you know that the ends of your fingers are the most special parts of your body in terms of being completely unique? And there is another part of your body that's pretty special too, that you can also take prints from. I'm not gonna give that away, sounds kinda weird. Can you guess? And dogs, dogs also have a special printing part of their body. No, it's not their toes. Hey, Aspen. No, her toes. No, no, no fingerprints on there. But if I, which I won't, and I don't urge you to do this, if I could print her nose, you would see that Aspen's nose is unique to her as well. And you could identify her nose prints on our front window from any other dog who might be doing that. So once we take our fingerprints today and look at what makes them identifiable, we're gonna make some art, some fingerprint art just for fun. We can do the alphabet, you could make a scene. A scene, she said, really, a scene, yes. Look, you could make an art scene. Oh, thank you, Aspen, that was very special. Yes, just like that. And you could also make a special imprint to remember your special feelings at this time of being home all day long with your family or with your caregivers. We're going to make a salt dough and uh, write down what we're thinking about at this special time of COVID-19 and put in our fingerprints and our toe prints. So lots of different choices for you to pursue and let's get to it. These are the main characteristics of fingerprints. The arch, which is a gentle hill, the loop, loopity doo, and the whorl. Sometimes they come together in these valleys and, and uh, triangles, and they're all special and unique between each human being. Scientists don't really know what causes them, they find some uh, patterns with genetics, meaning that your parents have fingerprints that are somewhat related to your fingerprint. It is not an easy genetic mystery to solve because many genes are involved. So it's not easy to trace who got arches and who got loops and why. You can use um, a magnifying glass to look at yours more carefully and together we're going to make some fingerprints of our own fingers. Let's give it a try. I made a fingerprint card. I'm going to take my right hand fingers to begin with. I have a piece of paper and a dark pencil, one that has a very soft lead. This one has a 4B. If you have harder lead like an HB, you just have to put more stuff on there. So I colored it up really well and that is what I'm going to use as my fingerprinting ink. It's not ink, but ink makes a big mess and sometimes ink is too gooey to control. So now I can put my desired fingerprint, rubbity rub rub rub. I want it to cover all of it really well. Yeah, and now you'd think I'm just going to put it on the paper. Nope, it doesn't get a good enough print. I'm going to put it directly on a piece of regular tape. Regular see-through scotch tape. Press it on really well all over. Do not lift it and put it back on. Ooh, it looks good. That was my right thumb. Here we go. Et voila, c'est une right thumb. Oh boy, look at that. What do police officers and investigators use to collect fingerprints at a crime scene? lots of specialized equipment, but we're going to try and experiment with different things that we can find around our house. 
So I have here talcum powder. It's a baby powder made from ground up rock called talc. I have cornstarch, really made from corn, yes. This one, we're going to use sandpaper and the graphite from a pencil. And this, we're going to use the soot from um, a candle. And if you can believe it, it's either a balloon, which I didn't have any, or an old um, medical glove that's also made of latex. And we're going to collect some of that soot. So let's try this one first. I've got two mugs to try it on, evidentiary mugs. And I have a dark colored one to try out the white powders and a white colored one for the dark powders. Last but not least, I need some scotch tape to collect the fingerprints for evidence. So let's give this one a try first. Talcum powder, now look, do I really want this much on the brush? I do not. I'm using a makeup brush, it's nice and fluffy. Paint brush is okay, but not if it's stiff, because that'll just scrape the prints right off. And where it sticks, and I see the evidence of a print, I lift the print off with a piece of tape. I want every little bit of the print, and so stick it on really well, pull it off, sure the message read, pull it off in one fell swoop. And then put this on a piece of black paper because the white powder will show up against the black powder, the black paper. Now I'm going to clean my brush and give this a try on cornstarch. To try my graphite, I'm going to take sandpaper and I'm going to scribble black pencil on it. Look at all that graphite. And now I'm going to try and now the last one we're going to take the soot from the candle. I have water in my balloon. It's important to have cold water in the balloon or this is just going to pop your balloon and make a mess. The water is going to keep the balloon cool enough that it doesn't just melt or pop. I was quite skeptical this would work, but oh my gosh, look at that. Look at all the soot it's collecting. It's even in the flame. Don't do this without a grown-up. A grown-up has to be with you for this, or you will have a terrible burn. All right, there we go. Whew. When it gets nice and black, that is the soot you need. You're going to collect that with your brush. So, I said there was another part of our body that is good for taking evidence from in the way of prints. Aspen and her nose shall not be printed. Do not print dog and cat noses, that's not nice. However, you can do another body part yourself. You can do your toes. I did my toes. You know what? My toe prints turned out better than my fingerprints because my toe prints were really clear and not really worn down. I took these toe prints yesterday and uh, I forgot to wash my feet before bedtime. You should have seen my husband's face when I came to bed with red toes. I thought that was pretty funny. Actually, he was a little bit appalled. Anyway, Aspen and I are now ready to move on to the art. Let's go find out what there is to do. Alright, so Aspen and I are going to try some fingerprint art. Aspen wants to eat the fingerprints. Oh dear. Okay, oh, it bit, bit. Yeah, I see. It's a kibble. There you go. Alright, I love you. Go away. How can I miss you if you won't go away? So, first fingerprint art I'm going to do is a scene, a little pastoral scene, dreaming of the outside. Here it 
comes the fingerprint part. Some sheep have white wool and black faces, black legs. So here comes my black faced sheep. I've taken black ink from my stamp pad, but I don't need a stamp pad. I could just use a black felt pen and color my thumb or finger. Ta da! I want a dog in the scene because we love Aspen. I'm gonna make mine a blue healer. R R R. I have some blue ink. And there's a blue face and my blue body. And that doesn't look anything like a dog, does it? And now I'm gonna give it some ears. Now, the thing I noticed is if you want it to be nice and roundy-roundy, you have to make sure you draw it roundy-roundy on your fingertip. If you just do raggledy edges, you get raggledy edges on your art. seen this done as thinly as a half centimeter but if you get it too thin you can't make a really good impression with your fingers. I'm going to use a cookie cutter but you don't have to you can just use the shape of the dough. Now for the thoughtful part. This is a keepsake, a memento of this time together. Myself, I've been in isolation for a couple of months. I, I have an underlying health issue and I probably will be in isolation for many, many more weeks than most people. I don't even know if I can be out there until they've got a vaccine. I feel really great when I'm working on these videos with you. So I'm going to be fully present at this moment and add my fingerprints to the dough and make my mark in time to remember that we can be as creative and resilient as any human. I kind of look like a doggy. We're going to do an aspen print in a minute and see how that turns out. I was thinking we could add some food coloring to this or you could paint it afterwards. I don't want anything to get in between me and my original touch so I'm not going to paint mine. I think I'm going to experiment with the food coloring in the next one. Okay, here we go. Here comes an aspen paw. Oh, I know you don't like it. Here we go. Here we go. Come on over here, baby. Come on. Come on over here, baby. There you go. That's a good girl. Oh, I know. You know that it's not right to stick your paw on things. Oh, yeah. There we go, babe. That's a good girl. Oh, oh yep, yep, yep. All right. Ah, no, 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 no. Don't eat the dough.
During this episode, we experimented with our fingerprints, taking them. I urge you to take some fingerprints from yourself and some of your family members and compare them. See if you can see any familiar uh, relationship between your fingerprints and anyone else's in your family. Then we did some art and we tried making some salty dough uh, imprints. This one is the Aspen one and I made one for me and put on scratched in a date and I even made one that had some food coloring in it that turned out pretty well. I had to let these sit around for a couple of days for them to get totally hard even after the baking and now if I want them to stay totally um, hard and uh, non-reactive I might coat them in um, craft glue or Mod Podge. So Aspen and I, thank you for joining us. Uh, another thing that you might do to add to your collection of physical art is uh, more of a poetic bent. You could try writing haiku that captures your feelings at this time. So I wrote a couple of haiku. They go five syllables, seven syllables, and five syllables. So only three lines. In uh, Japanese poetry, they are usually written about nature, but modern haiku are about all sorts of things. So I uh, did a reflective one. Hey, hey. Beauty in the heart is noticed blooming shyly, only in stillness. So I wrote that one to capture how I'm trying to look at this isolation time with gratitude. But then I thought, seriously, what would Aspen write if she could? Well, I think she would write, salty dough smells lure my nose and tongue. In my bowl, alas, only kibble. And so, see you next time from Mrs. Reed and Aspen.